Okay, so uh, me and ZSJ are going to be doing some tutorials on Haxi's Hideout for all the players that don't know really how to do all this new stuff with all these new mods. So today we're going to be doing MFFS, which is the modular force fuel systems, I do believe. Yep. That, uh, we're going to be covering force fuel projectors, interdiction matrices, and biometric identifiers. And ZSJ is going to be using the slash TB random command that our engineer set up recently for us. Hi. So, where'd you go? Sandbomb. Okay, sounds good. The command either TPs you on directly on land or near land. It doesn't just TP you in an ocean. And it has a radius of 10k in any direction from 0, 0. Yeah, so this is a really good way to... Just like get going places easier instead of having to walk the whole entire way. You might not want to take too much items with you because there is a chance of you spawning your lava spawning. or yeah. something like that. So, yeah, let's just get started on it. We're going to start with the force field system. This is the projector and how that works and how you get power to it. Okay, so. You want me to set up the fission reactor for the power? Sure. Nice. We're also going to be doing a fission reactor just to show you how well it can power something like this. So this is a coercion driver. And this basically just transfers uh, different types of energy into force field energy. I don't know the proper name for it, but that's just what it does. This this is called the Fortron capacitor. And it stores the energy that the coercion driver transfers so once this fills up you can set it right here to all the different things you can make it where this fills all the way up with power and then fills this up or you can make it where this equally distributes and you can make it way more than one you could cover this whole entire thing with these so what you want to do first is get a power set up, so he's going to be doing that, but for right now, I'm just going to get a power cube, and I'm going to be using some universal cables. Right here, you can set it where it doesn't need a redstone source for it to be on. That's usually the way I do, because I don't really see a point in that, unless you want it to only be turned on when there are players near, and you can just set that up with the proximity detector or something like that. And since these are all set to the frequency zero, which you can change, they're going to be powering this to this. And this will be hooked up to this. So I'm going to set up a few more so it powers up easier. And this is going to be powering all of these because they're all set to zero. That's how you power it with more than one of these. Okay, so... Here. Let me make a few of these. How these work is you can give it different types of modules. So if you wanted this to make a sphere, then you just put it in the sphere mode, right in the middle. And it shouldn't be starting up yet because I don't have any <coughs> modules in yet. And all these things right here, that's just basically the scale of how big it's going to be. Let me see if I can find... Here, scale module right here. This increases the size of it. So... There we go. Now I have it set up. It, uh, normally it doesn't break blocks, it just goes around them. But if that block is broken, then it'll fill up with a force field here. Let me see. Derp. Okay, see, it just fills up around the block. But once it's broken, it instantly gets refilled. And if you try and break these and you're in survival mode, 
it'll start damaging you and it hurts quite a bit so I wouldn't try and do that and it instantly refills itself but if you're the owner you can set it where you can just crouch and walk through them so that's how this works you don't have to set all of them up but there's two for each so you can have it where it's a scale module here that makes it go uh, bigger one down but you could also do it where you use a translation module which will move it to the left one block and the more you want it moved to the uh, left block that's how many translation modules you'd use so that's basically how that works if you need any real quick the max that you can have a force field is 60 bar 64 by 64 by 64 no matter how many scale modules you put in it yeah once it gets past 64 it just stays that size you can put like 32 right here and 32 right here since they're both back they're both back right there but if you put uh 64 in each it'll still stay at 64 it won't add up once it's past 64 okay so we're gonna start talking about the interdiction matrix and the biometric identifier Okay, so with the interdiction matrix, what that does is this basically sets an invisible radius of which you can just have to do different things. If it is the anti-friendly module, then that will kill any non-hostile mobs like cows or sheep or something like that. And once you get close, it will start warning you. But if we use a scale module and put it in there, the warning will be 33 and the action will be 30 so if you get 33 blocks from here it will warn you saying the interdiction matrix is in range and then 30 blocks from here it will actually take action so if you're a little pig just walking along and you get too close to this it will just instantly kill you see that's not a friendly mob so it wouldn't and you can also set it to pick up items from players and kill players but you can't make it pick up items that mobs drops mobs drop sadly yeah so that's basically how that works you can give all these things to it and there is a limit on things Do you, you can put in there whenever you put a hold up one second A confiscation module in it. That is what where it says filter mode banned and those then those red slots. Wh whatever you put in there, since it says banned, it will take from a player's inventory if they get inside the radius. It will confiscate the items. But if you set it to allowed and you put nothing in there, then it will take all my stuff. Everything. Why? Then it will take everything because nothing is allowed. Yeah, okay, so if you put an infinite as, battery in here and someone it. walked near with it, it wouldn't take all their items, it would only take the infinite battery. Okay, and if you are actually building this and this is your uh, force field system, then you want to get a biometric identifier and set it up to the same frequency as everything else. Actually, the interdiction matrix, it can have its own coercion driver if you would like for it to be. And biometric identifier basically what you get is a blank card no you get a identification card and you right click it and it becomes yours identification cards can be reused so if someone got my card and they right clicked it then it would be theirs but it wouldn't uh, hold the same trees so this would say that uh, this I'm the master of this but that wouldn't really do anything you want to put it up here and put it in the right slot and if I clicked everything here, then it would just give me all these permissions. So I put it in here, I turn it on. Okay, they're both on the frequency of zero. So here, see, it's not sealing my stuff when nothing's allowed. But if you turn it on, it'll take my things. Yeah, all your things are gone. But since I have the right to bypass all of these things, then nothing's going to be taken from me.